Well, it's wonderful to share it. You see these things alone in your in your room, and they really resonate with you. And it's nice to share it with an audience. So, can you give us a little update on Dalton? What's he doing? Yeah, he's um very sad not to be here. He's uh, doing a tour at the moment. Um, he's in a musical, which is sort of touring around the UK. So it's yeah, it's great. It's, he's got some work. Uh, he's got somewhere to live, um, which is sort of permanent and secure. So yeah, he's in a much. He's in a great place. Yeah. Can you tell us how you came to, you know, came to his story, how you found him, and um, yeah, just the genesis of the project? Um, well, Kim, who also sadly can't be here, is a massive um, X Factor fan, uh, and watches it religiously, as is, I think, Kevin, sort of uh, <laughs> from across the pond. And um, I think sh she saw him initially, and sort of fell in love. I mean, you know, you sort of, you hear his voice, and He's a really amazing talent, and uh, and then we got we sort of got talking to him after he won. He was approached by a few different teams wanting to make a documentary, and for whatever reason he chose us, uh, and that's sort of yeah where it started, and now we're five years later. Um, can you can you talk about the challenges? I mean, it's wonderful to that you ping ponged back and forth between the UK and Jamaica. Can you talk about, you know, the challenges of, of filming in the two places? Um, I think you better to answer that in question. Uh, I mean, well, it was particularly hard because we didn't have any money. <laughs> uh, so, uh, at the time. yeah, well, yeah, at the time. Then Kevin came on and Lorraine and they sort of really helped us to finish the film because we wouldn't be here without them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was a big challenge. And also, uh, for Dalton it was very difficult going back, as you can see in the film. Mm -hmm. And the first trip, uh, the previous producer to Lorin insisted that we have security. And then Dalton got really worried that actually they were going to give his position away. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in the end, we got rid of the security and we just went as a three. And he's a very bad driver. And so <laughs> he drives very fast. And so yeah, that's another another challenge. <laughs> yeah. So I programmed the music docs for for the festival, and you know, so this one sort of fits, but it's as much, if not more, uh, a story of personal reckoning and, and acceptance and his whole journey um, to forgive his mother and to love himself. Can you talk about when you realized that that might be more of a storyline than just the music? You have to say yeah, something. We can, we can spit. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, in terms of the evolution of what the film is now, I suppose initially we set out to make a film about him after winning the X Factor uh, and what that would be like trying to sort of start a new life in London um, and in a sort of industry that has a bit of a reputation. Um, and then in during the first trip to Jamaica, he we were sat in a petrol station with, our, with the cameras off and he told Kim and I that he's pansexual and said that he'd only told sort of two or three other people ever. Uh, and I suppose, you know, we realised that actually maybe it would be a different, the film would take a different trajectory and then he decided that he wanted to sort of make a film about that, essentially make a film about that journey. Um, and yeah, so, so I suppose that, that's how the film sort of changed from the initial to, to what it is now. Um, yeah, I'll, I will just say about like the kind of, so I, I joined the team, uh, you guys were more or less like done with like 90% of the filming. Uh, you filmed some more, but it didn't even like end up making the car, I think. And and basically, like I, th I reckon the the big thing was, as you said, like it's is it like a musical? Is it like a social drama? Is it like a human rights thing? Is that like a personal? And it was about kind of finding the balance. Is also happening between the UK and 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 Jamaica. How do we tell that story that is actually like so bloody complex as all personal stories are? Um, and I reckon we ended up, we were a year and a, a year and a half in post-production or something, 
trying different routes and and having Kevin also helping out with that because we also love I mean not only with your own experience but also I think we, it was really good to have like an American like input in in the film because I could say you super yeah it's it touches like the UK audience the Jamaican audience um, and and yeah I reckon it, it took us about like solid six months to be okay so it's the structure is going to be more or less like this and then kind of spending the rest of time to really try to make the story efficient because it's also so condensed <laughs> it's like it's literally three four years of his life yeah. in a year and a half no the um Amazing thing about the film is the incredible job that Frankie and Kim did in taking a story that's so complex. I mean, I got involved originally, as many of you know, I'm an LGBT rights activist because I wanted to tell a story about homophobia in Jamaica. But it's more than that. It's an it's incredibly compl complicated story um, about a human being um, coming to terms with who he is. And the sad thing about the movie to me was Part of why we made it was to educate people. And as you might know, last week the Jamaican Supreme Court upheld their sodomy law. Mm -hmm. So it's still illegal to be gay in Jamaica. And you see the pressure that creates on people like Dalton. Um, and I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna say two things that may be a little controversial. First of all, the ending's a little bit of a happy ending, but personally it makes me sad. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be really, really blunt for a second. He's in a fucking dining hall singing to a bunch of old white people in Britain. That man should be on the O2 stage singing to 20,000 people. And that didn't happen for him because of homophobia and mental illness. Mm -hmm. Let's be blunt. And not just in Jamaica, in the UK. Yeah. And in the UK, absolutely. Yeah. And secondly, as some of you know, I produced a film before this called Welcome to Chechnya, which was about homophobia in Russia. And I'm going to be blunt with you, I went to the same donors to that film and this film. They were a lot less interested in a film about a black person. And it was really hard to raise the money for this film. And Frankie and Loren basically did this for free. And they deserve a huge round of applause. <laughs> It just makes me sad to think that we are, what, 400 miles from Jamaica in the United States? And yet, everybody in America, I remember showing the trailer two years ago to some friends, and they were like, wait, I thought Jamaica was all one love. I'm like, one love unless you're gay. Yeah. Um, and we stand by and let this happen. And this incredible young man who is so beautiful and fantastic, and I have to thank my ex, Jeff Davis, who's an even bigger X Factor fan than me. He was the one who discovered Dalton. And when Frankie cold called me three years ago and said, can you produce this film? I was like, sure. Um, because Dalton himself is such an appealing human being. Um, and I, it's great that he's touring in the UK in a musical right now. But it's sad that he went through what he went through and his potential was curtailed, frankly, because he's a gay man. Are there any questions in the audience? It's very hard to see, folks. There's somebody yeah. right here. Yeah. Hi. Extremely moving film, so thank you for sharing this. Um, you know, as documentary filmmakers, we're always consistently analyzing the relationships we have with our contributors and I'm just interested in hearing how you uh, how you manage the dynamics with Dalton as he was so obviously struggling with his mental health and how you as filmmakers constantly um, tried to analyze you know how being there potentially affected him um, I think from the off um, the sort of conversation with Dalton was that it was always about a collaboration, that we weren't making a film about him, we wanted to make a film with him. And um, 
And I think, you, you know, as you see in the film, he went through some really different, difficult periods and it was about taking a cue from him. You know, we would always sort of meet with him without the camera to talk about what he m might want to be filmed, you know, what he thought was important to say. And, um, and yeah, there were, there's one scene with him with the trousers uh, where he gets annoyed at his stylist because uh, there's, I mean, they were constantly trying to put him in really baggy trousers. And he was always like, no, I want the really tight ones. <laughs> Imagine the tightest you've got and they go tighter. And, um, and we, weren't, we didn't film it because he was clearly quite upset. And afterwards, and, and then we sort of started to film just the end you get in the film. And he came up to us afterwards and he said, why weren't you filming that? Come on, you know, come on. And so it was, re it was about, yeah, as you say, it's about sort of dialogue with him and trying to yeah, take a cue from him and also give him his own camera. Which um, which gave him a bit more agency, I think, in terms of like he could film the stuff that he felt was important, and and really importantly, could film stuff with IOC, um, his his boyfriend, because uh, that was like very intimate and not stuff that um, that sort of we were privy to. Yeah, I would add. I mean, yeah, obviously, uh, time as a. Uh, we said like it, it was four years uh, filming, and really, you guys went like sometimes you would you you had a meeting with him, and he would not show up. <laughs> and then you waited under the rain in London town, um, but it was kind of yeah, being really kind of careful and like making sure that you're not pushing him to do things he doesn't want to do. And I reckon in, on my side, he was uh, very much about, so he didn't want to see the film for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, we planned for him to go and see the film at the production company. We were, we, we hired like a room and, and so on. And then he came over and like st stayed outside. Um, he would not be able to watch it. And, uh, Personally, it made me really nervous. <laughs> like, I was like, I can't, can't really like kind of take that film out and show it to you guys or anyone, knowing that he didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And luckily enough, um, a few weeks or maybe even months after, um, he kind of he kind of agreed and um, and he saw it and and really felt emotional but also felt that it was a honest depiction of his journey and uh, and kind of told you guys, which I think was really cute, that, I mean, you see throughout his life, he had a lot of mentors and a lot of people who followed him and dropped him and followed him again and vice and versa and like, um, yeah, he told you guys that you were the first one not to let him down and that was the best kind of and I'm really sad that he's not here tonight because we, we did a premiere in, in Sheffield and he was so excited mm. he was full of energy and he just he's just looking for more of these opportunities to share his stories but also like hear from people in the audience and, and see how like their stories can like you know touch everyone um, so yeah, we, we're going to try to do some more of that, I think. Absolutely. Thank you. Any uh, Wonderful film. Thank you for sharing. And please send Dalton our big New York City love. And he <laughs> should be here, absolutely. We'd love to meet him and spend some time with him. I'm curious, what are your plans for rolling this out, if at all, in Jamaica and showing that to the Jamaican audience? Back home? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so the plan is to do that, but um, but hopefully, so we're going to try to kind of roll an impact campaign from next year. It's also a lot of work and a lot of fundraising and all that jazz. Um, so it's still kind of like a bit up in the air and confirming which organization we're going to work with. But um, but yeah, I'm personally like in touch with a. a bunch of activists and organizations out of the Omega and we really want to like show it there and I know that Dalton really want to show it there too and the Caribbeans in general.
Yeah, I think that it's really important, as I said a moment ago, to recognize that very close to our own shores are some of the most homophobic countries in the world. And none of us made this film because we love the X Factor as much as we love the X Factor. <laughs> we made a film to make a difference. Um, and we want to roll it out in Jamaica and other places in the Caribbean to, um, you know, it's an incredible pressure Dalton was put under at age 24 to be the face of gay people in the Caribbean. What an incredible burden to be put on him. Um, and we really want the film to put a human face on these issues. Let's face it, people are still getting killed in Jamaica today for being gay. You know, the highest rate of homicide in the Western Hemisphere is Brazil and then Jamaica uh, for LGBT people. So it's absolutely critical that we educate folks with this film. And I just have to stop for a second and just thank Frankie and Loren and Kim, the co-director, not to out you. These are a bunch of straight people. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to tell this story because they knew how important it was. And I just want to thank them for their courage and their willingness to sacrifice and put years into this project with no financial recompense to make sure that this story of this remarkable young man got told. So thank you. <laughs>